by now you know about the 52 cards in 52 days and this year being 52 and 52 weeks. This was the 13th card last year. I am redoing that card. We are at the King of Spades, the 13th card, 13th week, and we are on a roll. So we have one suit completed. The spades is done. Here are a few other places you can find me along the web, but for now, you're on my channel, Two Old Crows Mixed Media. My name is Peg. I hope you will take a moment and subscribe to my channel. And of course, hit that notification bell because it lets you know when I upload additional content. And those thumbs up really help the channel. So I appreciate those. Thank you very much. So last year, I cut these little flowers out of scrapbooking paper. I laid down a little background of sandpaper and gessoed over the top of it. But this year, I am pulling a gel press print from a recent gel press session out of my scrap and using this little piece of acrylic that I received from a subscriber um, last year. Thank you, Amanda. I use it constantly. And it lets me know where to cut what I want. And it's in the shape of an ATC card. So it helps when, you know, defining what you want to, to cut out. But I have decided where I wanted it, cut the paper, and have glued it onto the card. So we have our foundation in place, and this is going to be the foundation for what we're going to complete with the King of Spades. So I want to go around the outside edge with some vintage photo. And I will be pulling out the gel press plate to create those little flowers. So let's get the gel press out. I'm going to choose a couple colors. I'm using a quinacridone red and a bright gold. Now I'm using the um, nickel azo gold and the orange is what I decided on. And I do have some red that I'm going to use as well. So I'm going to stay right within that complementary range up there with the reds. Reds, the oranges, etc. A little yellow. So I'm just getting a foundation down. And I'm pulling up some things that have been on the plate from previous sessions. So I'm going to add that orange and I'm putting some yellow in it and kind of adding that yellow tint to the orange. And then I'll do the same thing with the red, um, add a little yellow to create a darker orange, if you will. So there will be my first foundational piece, or my first background. And there, that created some nice color. And we have one that I did that is just a little bit darker. And let's get some of this quinacridone red out. Add a little yellow to it and create that darker orange. I'm going to use this as a mask, so I'm going to pull that paint out from the open places with my scrap page here and now I will put my background down and pick up what was underneath the stencil 
So I think that turned out nice. Let's just do that once again. Let me stick with the complete red this time. Get the paint out from the open areas in the stencil and let the stencil serve as a mask. And now pull this on the other background. It didn't show up quite as well, but let's add some gold to it. And we'll do the same thing. We'll pull the open areas with our scrap paper. And come back with the background piece. And there. I think that print turned out nice. I'm going to darken that gold a little bit with some burnt umber. Make it just more of a burnished gold, if you will. You'll be able to see the difference in the two when I pull this up because you can see the last one. See how much darker that is? I like that. Now we'll lay our other background down on this one. So there are the two pieces. And now I'm cutting a flower. So I have this flower stencil. I thought I would just draw around it with the white gel pen. And doodle on the inside. I'm, I'm into doodling right now, so that's kind of kind of my thing for the moment. So we'll just mark up this flower. And I don't I wind up not using this one, but I went ahead and left it on here because I like the way that it turned out and I will use it. I just don't know for what right now. I think I tucked it down inside my art journal to use on a page in there. So I'll cut that out. It doesn't look bad on there, but I'm not overly happy with it. So I had cut out this other little flower too. So I'm going to just add some marks on this one and we'll use the smaller flower. I think it I think it fits in pos not positioning but in, in size. Better. It's just more in line with the card, I think. I think the other one kind of overpowered the card. You can see me fuss around with it, but I, I like just that one down there in the corner. What do you think? And now I wanted to add just a little more interest to the inside of that flower as well. So I'm digging through my scraps and bits and pieces. And my first thought is to add a brad to the center of that. So I'm poking a hole in the center of the card that I can position that brad through. And that is okay, but it doesn't really fire me up.
that much. So I'm going to take that brad out and look for something, something different. Yeah, I just can't, I just, I just can't get excited about that brad. So I found this little piece of flower that I pulled off of a piece of lace. And I'm going to thread that through that hole and glue that into place on the back. And now, you have to agree with me, that looks so much better than the brad. So it just gives it that floral look. There's the fabric with the paper. It just looks so much better. So I have this white cheesecloth, and I want to add a little bit to the top of the card as well. So I will be punching a second hole in the card up in that upper right corner. And I will just thread this um, cheesecloth through that hole. I'm looking for my eyelets. I'm going to go ahead and put an eyelet into that hole to kind of keep it from tearing. So there's the eyelet, and I will use my crocodile to position that in place. I have to stand up to do that, to really get some force on it, to set those eyelets. It took me a while to learn how to use that eyelet setter. But it's kind of like anything else. Once you get used to it, it's pretty easy. So I'm just going to thread this cheesecloth through here. I'm going to fray that. And that completes that card. So there it is, side by side, last year to this year. So I hope you're enjoying the Altered Playing Card deck and coming back and playing with me every week as we complete one card. We have now finished the spade deck and we will be starting on our Nyx suit or our spade suit. And we'll be starting on our Nyx suit next week. So come and join me. You can get notification by hitting that notification bell. Please subscribe to my channel. And of course, I appreciate all your comments. Bye for now.